Welcome, everybody, to our Avail Leadership Podcast. It's exciting to be connected on another podcast. My name is Virgil Sierra. I'm the Avail Leadership Media Host, and I'm also the lead pastor of Vertical Church, also known as Iglesia Vertical in South Florida, where we are one church, two languages. And Avail Leadership is uh, its a brand for the Christian leader, and we are constantly producing new Uh, resources for leaders, practical, relevant resources. Every month we have books coming out, we have studies, we have courses, we have video teachings, uh, we have articles, uh, the Avail Journal, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Our aim is to equip today's leaders to get better and to increase in their leadership skills. And today I have the honor of connecting with a very special person, connecting with Pastor Lisa Kai. Pastor Lisa is an author and a leader. Pastor Lisa, I don't know what it must be like to live in Hawaii, but I am excited to connect with you in this moment. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. It's sunny. It's blue skies. You can see the blue waters. And um, it's, it's literally hot every day throughout the year. So we, we don't have seasons. You know, I think our coldest uh, would be our winter months. And I would say in the 70s. So that's kind of, that's really cold. That's when we bust off the sweaters. Uh-huh. And the blue, scarves. The scarves, you know, because it's so chilly. Um, <laughs> But we're so blessed to be living in the state of Hawaii. And, you know, for for me to be pastoring in the state of Hawaii, people get jealous. People are mm-hmm. like, well, that's really hard, you know, being missionaries in Hawaii. <laughs> and I'm like, well, it is kind of hard. Um, so my husband and I, my husband, Mike Kai, and I have been pastoring Inspire Church since 2001. So it's been a long, it's been long, it's been a long time. I, you know, it feels yeah. weird that I remember, I still remember the first day when we said yes to our senior pastor and, um, and I can't believe where we are today. We have three beautiful girls. Um, Courtney is 33 years old and people are probably thinking, you don't look like a, a woman who has a daughter that's 33 years old, but my husband was a single dad at 19. So we got married in our mid twenties. And then we had two more girls and we had two female dogs. So our whole household is filled with estrogen. Wow. Yes. And so, and then and my oldest daughter is married, living in Oregon with our two grandkids named Bowie and Otis. So that is our family. And I am full Chinese. I was born in Hong Kong, but my whole family migrated to Hawaii when I was just about a year old. So I've, literally grew up, lived in Hawaii, never left. Um, I wish I did, but never did. So, and actually I wasn't even a Christian till I was in my early twenties. I was always, I was raised in a Buddhist home. Um, So Christianity was never, never, you know, I I didn't know who Jesus was. It was literally, I think when I saw a play in high school called Jesus Christ Superstar. Wow. (laughs) And I just thought, okay, Jesus has long hair, it's curly, (laughs) he has a little mustache, and that was my only image of Jesus. And I think watching the Ten Commandments on TV every, probably Christmas time, I think, whenever it used to come out. So that was my only image of who Jesus was. So Christianity was, was totally new to me. But it's just been an amazing journey that God has my, my, had me on. And I'm just so blessed to be here with you, Virgil, and to be able to do this podcast. And we love Dr. Sam Chan. <laughs> thank God for Dr. Sam Chan for coming into our lives. So, well, but thank you so much. And thank you for listening in to all of you who are listening. Yeah, you know, at Avail Leadership, we love to connect with leaders and pastors who are really they're in the trenches doing it. I mean, and have been doing it for a while, like you and your husband. I, I want to take a moment because I know there's some people who are probably curious as they're, as they're listening in uh, or maybe even watching uh, this podcast. Um, there's a lot of people who know who you are, Pastor Lisa, and also your husband, Pastor Mike, but there's a lot of people who don't. And, and I, I want to just make sure 
Everybody understands their pastors in Hawaii. Uh, it's Inspire Church. Um, and, and Lisa, not only are you are you pastoring the church along with your hus- husband, but you're also an author. And I just want to mention from the, from the top here, there's an amazing book called Perfectly You. We'll talk a little bit about uh, more about that uh, as we proceed here in the in the podcast. Uh, but I know that you also have a, a, a podcast called I Am Her, which is a great resource again for for women and uh, you know especially women who have that gifting the God God's place in their life uh, and leadership as well. And so again, we're honored to be connecting with you. I, I'd love, I'd love to get into some, some, some Q and a with you, because I think as we, as we kind of delve into your experiences and what, what you've been through uh, uh, together with your husband, pastoring uh, all these years, I think there's some great value that a lot of people can, can receive out of that. And so I, I'm, I've, we've prayed before we started this recording yeah. and we said, Lord, just, just use us. And, and Lord, I pray that you'd speak through Pastor Lisa. So we're ready. Um, and, and the first question that I have for you, Pastor Lisa, is um, tell us a little bit about the book, Perfectly You. Um, I know that these are some of the topics you go into, but what insecurities are most common that you wanted to address with this book? you know, um, whether it's pain points from your life that inspired you to create it, you know, what, what was the motivation and kind of what's the heart behind the book perfectly you, you know, when I wrote this book, you know, God put it out of my heart for, for, for actually several years. And, you know, when God puts something on your heart, you think, no, not me. Uh, I'm not an author. Who's going to listen to you? Who's going to really read your books, right? You know how the enemy just speaks lies to you. Yeah. And I finally did it. I think I decided, you know, I got to be obedient. I have to be obedient. So I literally told the women at my conference one year, I said, well, I'm going to let you know that I will write my book this year because God told me to. And I needed a thousand of you to hold me accountable because by the time next, the following year, you're, you're going to see my book finally written, printed. And so I'm just one of those people that, if God says to do it, I know I have to do it. And I think so many people yeah. don't follow through on what God tells you to. And this book is literally my life story. And I think we, you know, many of us women can, we do feel the same. We feel insecure. We feel inadequate. We feel sometimes rejected, not accepted in a lot of different circles of, of influence or friendships. And women can be very catty. I don't know about you men, you know, you have a different, you know, insecurity, but women. We're, I, 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 I'm not going to agree, but my, my wife has said something similar to what you just said. Yeah, it's true <laughs> because, you know, I, you know, growing up when you enter a room and when it's filled with female or male and females, this is the first thing female do. They look, they, they, they look through the room and they hmm. want to say, who's the prettiest girl there mm. you know oh she looks great you know we look at you know legs we look at everything else and yeah. and we compare ourselves and I think comparison leads us to our insecurities yeah it's because we're never satisfied with who we are and we look onto others like you know like I would say well I don't like my nose but I'm going to look at somebody else's nose I go I wish I had that nose or you know, for a lot of us Asians, we don't normally have double eyelids. And we always desire to have double eyelids. So <laughs> therefore, whenever we see women with double eyelids, we're like, I want that. I want those eyes I, instead of, you know, so we, we never really accept ourselves. It's kind of like, it's kind of like, you know, that saying, it seems like the grass is always greener on the other side. Like it is, yeah. want what somebody else has. Yeah. And it's, and it's, and I think if you grew up that way, which all of us probably have since we were a kid and if no one tells you who you are or no one believes in you or say you're beautiful you actually got to figure it out Hmm. and i think just being raised in a chinese home that was never spoken you know you were never told how beautiful you were you were never told how good you were you were always just told what you were not doing well all the inadequacies you know you're never praised that's how it was in my home. Wow. And it's not, and it's not, you know, say anything negative about my parents. It's just, that's not how they were raised. It's culturally, it's kind of the culturally. cultural idiosyncrasy yeah. of, uh, of yeah. the culture. 
it, it was. And so for me, um, TV, movies, you know, friends were the ones that really helped shape me to who I am then. Right. And when I finally, you know, when I got into, um, you know, this women's ministry called Arise, and that's literally how it started. And when God put that on my heart, God says, you know, I want you to lead the women. And I'm like, no, I don't want to <laughs> lead women because I know how women can be, you know, right. they're kind of fake, you know, um, they're, they're not really authentic, you know, and you see this perfect woman up there and you're just, it's like the Proverbs 20, 31 woman. And you're like, I don't want to be that woman because I can't live up to her expectation. Right. And so, and I think just writing this book was, it was God, God actually had to work on me first. Mm. It wasn't like I wrote this book and go, okay, this is how you should be. God was working in me for many years from the beginning of just accepting who I was, acknowledging my insecurities. And part of it was when we did have a conference here, a leadership conference, we had a John Bevere. I don't know if you guys all know who John Bevere is. Yes, of course. Yes, of course. Um, he came with a message. He came with two messages. One was overcoming your um overcoming your insecurities Securities, yeah okay and another one was having the extraordinary life and i think because of that that really sh kind of shaped me it kind of almost like you know i felt like john came and slapped me in my face <laughs> and and that because that's how he preaches right mm -hmm. and i remember at the end of his message he asked how many of you want to overcome your insecurities and this time i'm a pastor's wife yeah. You're always sitting in the front row. Everybody knows who you are because you're <laughs> sitting in the front row. You, you can't see anyone in the back. But I, it'd be, you know, I was like, I don't care. I'm going to stand up because he was asking for boldness. He was yeah. asking for people to come forward. And I just shot myself out of my seat. And I'm like, yes, I want to overcome mm -hmm. insecurity. And usually I would have been like, I wonder if anyone else is looking at me because this is pretty embarrassing. Well, can I just jump in here? Pastor Lisa? Yeah. I think as a pastor myself, I know what it feels like to be receiving a good, oh, an amazing word ministered to, but then as a pastor feeling, wait a second, if, if I stand up, yeah. then I'm supposed to be perfect. You yeah. know, people, people think that I shouldn't have to deal with issues. <laughs> And that's expectations. You know, wow. I'm always trying to please everyone else's expectations and then not really having to show everyone your true colors. You know, like I do deal with this. I do right. deal with that insecurity. And I think because of that obedience, it broke. Hmm. Something broke in my spirit. Something that, that insecurity, the spirit of insecurity, or whatever you would call it, it just broke. But I think what the first step was to acknowledge that. Hmm. And then I had to literally kind of ask the Lord to show me, like, how do I get healed up of this? How do I, you know, because I, when I started this women's ministry called Arise, I told the Lord, I said, okay, well, I've been to enough women's retreats. I've been to enough women's breakfasts. I said, I just want to go to a place where I feel like I can just be me. Mm -hmm. And I wanted women to feel the same way. I didn't want us to have to fake it till we make it. I wanted us to be okay with who we are, you know, and not feel like we have to put up this wall. And the and reason why the book titled the title Perfectly You is because I feel like if you're a perfectly you, you can actually walk in the authority, walk in the confidence that God has called you to be. And I call that God confidence. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, versus self-confidence. Self-confidence is really a relying on yourself. Yeah. But we all want confidence. But if we had Godfidence, I call it Godfidence. Godfidence, I like that. Godfidence. It's, a, it's still confidence, but it's based on God versus self. And I, that's the reason why in, until you get to that place, then you can be perfectly you. So it's, the, you know, this book, Perfectly You, is literally a journey of figuring mm. out who I was and being perfectly who I am and being comfortable in who, who I am 
And that's, that's really why I wrote this book. I wrote it as if I'm sitting across at Starbucks, mm -hmm. having my little chai latte, and just really encouraging women with this book. Because I, I love having coffees with women. I love getting to know people's story. And if I can encourage them and make them feel comfortable to the point where they feel accepted, then that's the first step of stepping into Perfectly You. So good. You know, I think, I think a lot, there's a lot of uh, people, especially women that are probably interested in this book. And, and again, the book is Perfectly You by Pastor Lisa Kai. Uh, we'll talk more about it, but lisakai.tv is a good place for you guys to get some more information on that book. Um, as you're speaking, uh, Pastor Lisa, I'm thinking, I'm thinking of a lot of women in my life that are close to me, like my you know, family even, um, and even in, in, in our church and in our ministry, even my wife. You know, there's this pressure. First of all, there's this pressure of being in a, in a, in a position of pastoring, you know, and, and, and leading but then there's the position of, well, you know, I'm, you know, being a woman and, and we know that uh, in some circles, that's a challenge, you know, being a woman and being a leader. And then, and then at the same time dealing with, well, you know, whether it's personal insecurities or, you know, cultural insecurities uh, from growing up. Yeah. So here's the next question in your own words, what does it mean for women to rise up in their full expression? And, and, and what does that look like, practically speaking, on a daily level for, for women to, to rise up to their full expression, which I'm sure is something you touch on in this book? You know, one of the things I have always taught my kids, which was taught to me while I was in ministry, that, you know, whenever someone would say, well, you know, I'm just so bad at this, or, you know, um, I'm this, I'm that. And I'll be, I would look at them and i say, well, is that a truth? Or is that a lie? Mm. Because so many of us are living out the lie yeah. about who we think we are supposed to be and not understanding that there is actually a truth to the lie. And I think when that was revealed for me in my life and I realized, oh my gosh, why have I believed in a lie for 20 years? Why mm. did I stick to that lie when I know that's a lie? Right. And when you base it on the word of God, with who God says you are, it doesn't equate. And so for that, I just realized, you know, this is my goal. This is what I, you know, if every woman can rise up to their full expression is when they can conquer those lies about themselves and walk out and live out the truth of God, of who she, who God says we are. And then we've actually risen and now that we've risen, now we can literally influence other women to do the same. And that's the reason why, you know, a rise is so important to me is because I just feel like when God has a, like, I literally felt God had awakened something in me. Like 20, uh, I would say 10, 11 years ago, mm. God awakened something in me that I never knew was in me. And when God says, you know, now is the time now is the time to be awakened now is the time to rise up and i'm like oh my gosh i've never honestly at that time in my life i've never heard of that because honestly in my generation i guess i didn't see a lot of women yeah in leadership mm -hmm. I, especially in pastoring you know i've always seen the woman behind the scene i was raised by amazing pastors and Ruby was definitely an amazing leader, but she, you never seen her on the platform. Mm -hmm. You've never really heard her preach. You've never heard her step up, you know, and stand side by side to do things together, you know? Yeah. And honestly, in the beginning stages of my pastoring, I kind of rebelled. I was mm -hmm. like, I refuse to sit in the front row. Mm -hmm. I don't want people to, I don't want to, I didn't want to stick to the norm of what a pastor's wife's supposed to be. Right. And then finally, I realized that, you know, when God awakened something in me and God was stirring something inside of me and I said, wow, I, I have all these gifts inside of me and I just want to use those gifts, but I want to use it where it actually will make an impact and it will make a change and that it would, it would influence the women uh, in the state of Hawaii. That's so good. You know, um, 
I, I, a lot of what you're saying really resonates because I've heard my wife say these words to me. You know, she said things like, hey, you know, my parents were, were, were uh, our pastors. I'm wow. a pastor's kid and we grew up in our church. And, and she says, you know, I, I, I always admired, you know, she says, she says, I was my, my, my pastor and, and, and pastor's wife, but maybe the role that she played was, was different than the role. And even the giftings are different, right? Because every, mm-hmm. not every uh, no. uh, pastor's wife is, is created no. equally, right? Or not even pa- no. pastors get created equally. Yeah. And you were saying something interesting about, about lies. I think, you know, the Bible teaches us that the truth sets us free. Yeah. We also understand the opposite, that lies bind us up and they yeah. limit us and they hold us yeah. back. And I think that's kind of what, you know, what you're yeah. expressing. Yes. And, you know, if people like, especially with, I, I have such a heart for the young girls, you know, for my daughter, I have daughters, right. Mm-hmm. And to see them walk through life, living in a lie would mm-hmm. be really damaging. And because, you know, I found that truth later in life, I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to tell everybody, you know? So whenever women come up to me, girls come up to me, you know, they're telling me their story and they're telling me what they believe. And I will look straight into their face. I go, come on, was that a lie or is that a truth? Right. Are you really receiving that lie for yourself? Because that is a, that is a lie. And they'll be like, well, that's what, that's what's been told over my life all Mm. these years. I don't know. I thought this was, this is who I am. I thought I was not smart. I thought I was not pretty. I thought I was this. I thought I was that. And I said, no. And a part of it was, I think for my upbringing, you know, my dad did, you know, typical Asian father, you know, he would compare the girls. He would compare me and my sister. And he would say, my sister was the smart one. And she was, right? Oh, but Lisa, she's the pretty one. You know, she's always has boyfriends. She's always this. She's always trying Mm. to put on makeup. She's always trying to, you know. Yeah. And so I lived out my life thinking, well, I guess I'm not smart. Right. So I'll just go and get a two-year degree instead. Yeah. I'll I'll forsake the four-year degree because I don't think I can handle for what my sister did. Yeah. And I think when I, when I walked out that lie, it was a disadvantage to myself. I could have finished, I could have excelled greater if I had known that actually, no, you are smart, Lisa, but you're smart in your own way. But if I compare myself to my sister, if I compare myself to someone else, I will feel inadequate. So, you know, I really, I'm, that's such a passion of mine is to see women and anyone to be set free of living out a lie rather than walking out of the truth. You know, I want to, I kind of want to stay on the same line here. Uh, uh, I'm going to reorder a few questions that I had. Yeah, because, because this is really good. Um, What you're, what you're expressing right now is I think what most people, and and this is men and women alike, but, but it's just so interesting because I think sometimes um, we don't feel the permission to be able to talk about it. So I I think this is great specifically in this, the issue of insecurities. What would you say is one of the most important steps that women need to take in order to overcome those insecurities, whether it's, you know, how I look insecurities, whether it's what people think of me insecurities, whether it's, you know, how I messed up in the past or how I've been boxed in into this category. What would you say? What, what advice would you give to overcome those insecurities? You know, one of the first thing is to admit, to admit those insecurities. Um, I did a study um, through Beth Moore and it was really getting to the root of it. You know, and we, I remember this, in this study, you had to write down, what are you insecure about? Because not many of us will write that down. What am I insecure about? (laughs) Okay, so I'm writing my, writing what I'm insecure about. And then now we have to share it amongst the group. Wow. And I'm like, whoa, no, I don't want to share my insecurities because it's my insecurity. Yeah. But because I shared it, and I'll just tell you my first insecurity. My first insecurity was that I felt like I just wasn't smart enough. Hmm. People would think, oh, this 
Chinese girl. She, she looks smart. She looks all put together. And I was always told, you just look so put together all the time. You look smart. It looks like you graduated with a BA, a bachelor's or a master's. Mm. And I think I would just walk around thinking, well, I'll just let them think that, mm. you know? But inside of me, I was like, but I did it. I didn't graduate with a bachelor's. I graduated with an associate degree mm. and I would be embarrassed about it. Yeah. Because it was like a reflection of my intelligence. Yeah. And I said, well, that's my insecurity. I said, I, I feel like I'm not smart enough. So I have to. So usually when you're insecure about something, you shy away from it. Right. So when I'm in a, a room filled with, to me, intelligent people, pastors, right? I would feel like, okay, I don't want to get into a conversation with, I don't want to get into a conversation with them because I don't think I can carry a conversation. Right. Especially if they talk, start talking about revelation. I'll be like, <laughs> okay, I'm out, I'm out of here. I'm exiting this conversation. And I, I think for years we avoid things because we're insecure about something. And I got tired of avoiding everything. You know, I was trying, I was, I was tired of trying to fake it as if mm -hmm. I am who they think I am. And I think when you first acknowledge that and you acknowledge it in front of a group of women or a group of people that you trust that yeah. would really look at you like, what? Real, you know? Yeah. Or hold it against you. And I think that's the first step is letting that wall down and be yeah. feel, feeling a little safe and i think from there it's that's the hard part that you know that was the easy part now the hard part begins is how do i grow up how do i grow out of this and i honestly had to take you know take hold of my my thoughts and then to me thoughts are the hardest thing to 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 actually hand, you know, to, yeah. to surrender, to, to admit, surrender, to, yeah. because this can really drive you really, really crazy. Yeah. You know, because you have the same thoughts and the enemy keeps telling you the same thing that you've listened to for yeah. 10, 20 years or whatever it is that I had to speak to myself. Like I felt like, you know, um, you know, you know, you know what a fly swatter looks like, right? Yes. You know, like a little Chinese fly swatter. Uh huh. I felt like anytime the, the enemy wanted to plant the seed of lies, mm -hmm. it's like he's, the fly was pooping on my head. Like it wants to poop on my right. wants head. wants to stay there. He wants to stay there. <laughs> and I feel like, you know, I'm, I feel like invisibly I'm holding a fly swatter and I'm just like, just, you know, trying to get it out kill the flies and trying to, you know, push them away because the lie just wants to land on you and poop on you. Yeah. That's what I feel like. Yeah. And, and I said, you know, like I, I would tell women, I said, I, I feel like I'm crazy because I feel like I'm always doing this, you know, like I'm trying to kill all these flies and trying to get these lies out of, you know, the don't yeah. let the lies land on me is because I just, I'm trying so hard to not believe in that lie and try to believe in the truth, but I had to walk through it yeah. versus trying to avoid it. Yeah. And, you know, let me, let me jump in here because I think what you're saying, you know, the new Testament, Paul talks a lot about the renewing of the mind. Yes. Um, you know, we understand that, that Paul also says about taking every thought captive to the feet yes. of Jesus. Right. Because the reality is this is one of the ways the enemy will attack us because if, if, if we're not thinking right, that's going to affect how we speak yeah. and how we act. We won't speak right and we won't act right. Mm -hmm. And so the battle really begins there. And then what you said earlier is the confession, right? There's power in confession. There's yeah. power in not only admitting it, but then releasing it, which yeah. is why you need those, you know, if you're what I recommend, if you're a woman, you need some, some great women around you that you can trust yeah. that you can be yourself yeah. with. You know, if you're a man, you should have a group of men, you know, that you can, that you could open up with because the power, well, as long as it's inside and it's not confessed, the it enemy still has a hold of it. Release. Oh yes. And that was something I had to learn how to trust people and release it. And I think the biggest thing is shame. I yeah. think shame 
is so huge. The enemy f- wants to shame you, yeah. but God doesn't want to shame you. And I think knowing that, and then there was even a scripture about shame, about how, you know, God wasn't going to shame us. And I, I just was like, I think that was the most, I think people worry about being shamed by other people. Yeah. But then when I came to the truth of Lisa, God doesn't want to ever shame you. He loves you. Why would he want to embarrass you? And I think that's a big one for all of us. Yeah. We won't come out of our shell per se. We won't come out of our place of vulnerability is because we don't want to be shamed. Yeah. Because we won't look like everybody else or we won't act like everybody else. And when you finally overcome the shame, you overcome the lies, then you can actually walk out your perfectly you. Yeah. And that's the reason why this, it, and the title was totally God too. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, after writing the book, I didn't even know what title the book was going to be called. <laughs> and, but then when I saw, you know, God gave me this word perfectly you, I'm like, yeah, how does it feel to walk perfectly you? You know, and it feels so, it's like almost like fitting in the right jeans. You mm-hmm. buy the perf- you buy this jean, you know, you, you have tens and dozens of jeans. And when there's that one jean that fits perfectly, you're like, oh, I like this. <laughs> Feels good. <laughs> <laughs> the skinny <No>. jeans. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, um, I think it's very important for if you, uh, any of the women who are listening, if you have not uh, had a chance to hear about or get the book, uh, perfectly you by Lisa Kai, perfectly you, you can go to Lisa Kai.tv, uh, and get more information on that book. And, and, uh, even, even Pastor Lisa's, uh, podcast, which is, I am her, which is a great way to just kind of get, I think Pastor Lisa, I think a lot of, um, I think people in general, but especially a lot of women just need the encouragement and somebody, they need just courageous women like yourself that would just come out and speak and say what, what they're thinking, but not willing to say, or, you know, to just kind of open up the door. So then they, so then others can feel comfortable saying, you know, I feel the same way, or, you know, I'm hard on myself in in the same way. And, and, and I want to, I want to segue the conversation now because being pastors, you know, and, and, and not only not only being pastors, but planting a church, right? You, you guys planted a church, right? Yes, yes. And so do you have any interesting stories or, of, of, you know, when you guys were first planting and growing the church, which I know it was an inspired church at the beginning, right? No, no, we had a different name. Um, it was Hope Chapel West Oahu, which is uh-huh. a tongue twister. And um, <laughs> so we changed it probably seven years in. And it's kind of like, it's one of those things where, like, who are you? You know, you just, you, you take your name, but yeah. then you eventually evolve to become who you are. Yeah. And then that's when we decided to change the name of the church. And um, what was the question again? So, so any interesting stories, anything that, oh, that, you know, about there's, planting and kind of growing the church in those first years? There's plenty. Um, I would say the biggest one would be, you know, as when you're a wife to a visionary, a type A kind of guy, kind of <laughs> like you, you guys are like, you guys just keep going, 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 because you want to succeed. You yeah. know, you're, you're driven by success. And as a, as a wife, you know, you have other responsibilities too. You, uh-huh. you got to take care of your husband, you got to take care of the kids, and you want to help him succeed. And because we're raised both by the same pastor, my husband... You know, in the beginning, he did everything what we were taught, okay, (laughs) on how to plant a church, how to lead a church. And I'm one of those. I stick to the protocols. I stick to the procedures. You follow the rules, right? I follow the rules. You're a rule follower. You and my wife would get along. She's a rule Uh, follower. Yes. And he he would go out of the lines. And I'd be like, get back into this. You know, that's not what Pastor Ralph would do. Why are you doing it that way? Because he was a risk taker. Yeah. You know, and I was getting to know him because now he's become my pastor. And that uh-huh. was a whole, oh, that's a whole nother dynamic. That's a, that's a whole nother line that sometimes oh, that's a whole get blurred. Podcast. That's a whole nother podcast. <laughs> and, um, but I remember for, for the first couple of years, I kept questioning his leadership. Yeah. I questioned everything he did. And I, would, I was actually discouraging him. You mm. know, he would have 
these great vision and it, these were huge visions and we were only a, a church of 80 people yeah you know he was talking about thousands and you know and renting this big warehouse where it can house you know the many thousand people that will be coming and i'd be like honey we only have 80 people <laughs> and so one day he went to a big conference um and he went by himself because of course we had a little one mm -hmm. and and a lot of times women get stuck in that season yeah just raising kids and really not walking alongside their husbands and really growing with them yeah so he came back from this conference fired up like his eyes got wide open he felt another vision coming and i'm like okay what vision number is this honey <laughs> and um and then I think this is the key phrase that he told me. He's like, honey, I want you to grow with me. Yeah. And I was like, I am. He's like, no, no, I want you to grow with me because I can't go further if you're not going to grow with me. Mm. And I thought, am I going to be the one that's going to hold him back? Am I going to be the one that's going to hold this church back because of wow. my insecurities or my, you know, you know, lack of flexibility right and that's what i had to really think about it that i had to start saying i need to put as much time as i do in raising my kids to putting that much time to helping my husband mm. pass to the church together yeah it wasn't this thing of you you're the senior pastor you just do it so that was a big lesson for me in the beginning years of planting a church. And even till this day, I've gotten a lot better. I yeah. hold my tongue. <laughs> I realize he can have 10 vision in the last two, three years. And I figure one or two of them is going to succeed. So I just got to shut up. <laughs> can I say that? And, yeah, yeah. Um, and I just, you know, you know, I think, um, it's, it's the scenario is true and I don't think you're the only ones, but something particular I think is important to note. Um, you know, some, again, all, all pastors aren't created equal, no. all pastors, wives aren't created equal. And in this case, there is a calling on your life to pastor along with your husband. Mm -hmm. it, that might not be the case of the scenario for every, every, everyone, but, but I think that there's some <clears throat> that need to give themselves permission of saying, Hey, God has placed leadership and giftings yeah. in, 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 in me as a, as a woman or as a wife. So, so you're going to be that wife, but, but if that calling is there also to lead in pastor, being able to embrace that, feel comfortable in your skin yeah. and, and obviously learn from some others. So I think pastor Lisa, you have a, you have an important role to play for a lot of young ministry couples and a lot yeah. of young pastors. And I guess that would be kind of my next question to redirecting it is, is what advice would you give to pastors uh, and or pastors' wives or wives who are also pastors with their husbands that are starting out in ministry. What what advice would you give? Because there could be tension. I know there can be tension. There can be, you know, uh, not seeing eye to eye on, you know, every single thing. Uh, yeah. But at the same time, there's a beauty of complimenting. Because I know one thing is I'm pretty good, but my wife makes me better. Better. Yes. And she's amazing. And I feel like I can do things that can help her get better. And, and I think there's this beautiful complimentary yes. thing that happens when a couple is called to lead and pastor together. So what advice would you give to young pastors, young leaders, or even, you know, pastors who haven't been able to embrace this? You know, I think you have to decide who's the leader. <sighs> who is the leader? Mm -hmm. And who is your pastor? Yeah. That was the biggest, like, the biggest acceptance that I had to do was when my senior pastor told me that your husband is now your pastor. Wow. And I've been pastored by my pastor since the day I gave my life to the Lord. Mm. And that was like 12, 13 years. And to now have to have my husband be my senior pastor, as well as my husband, I, that was a big step to accept that he is the leader and then to come alongside of him and yes to utilize the gift that god has given you you know every, all of us have different gifts but at the end of the day you have to do it together no matter what role you play you know whether it's a big role a small role and if you're just and if you're home watching the kids and taking care of the kids 
that's amazing too because there is a season to it yeah you know every every you know you have young kids all right stay home that's great <laughs> don't worry yeah. about it you know but i think when you can when you have a you know there's also the other side a husband who also cheers his wife on yes if if it's all about just him the church can become a mistress yeah to, as to the wife yeah. you know what i'm yeah. saying and so there was such a balance and i understand you know young pastors men you have to succeed that's just that's just what god put in you yeah. And that's the great thing about why we marry the men we, we marry, you know, it's because we see leadership. We see such an awesome anointing that is upon our spouse. But as a, as a woman, it's like when you have a husband that encourages his wife to be everything that she is called to be, then it's, then it equates to doing it together versus it's just all about Mike Kai, you know? And I think one of the greatest success i think in sense of our our team mike and lisa as a team mm -hmm. is that we were always for each other and we weren't competing against each other you know because we are good at certain things you know he's better at this i might be better at this and he's you know vice versa yeah but i think if we learn how to not compete with each other and be for each other and to encourage each other to be successful yeah. and not see it as, you know, a competition. Oh, well, if you're better at that, let me, let me, you know, especially maybe for a male, you know, yeah. you know, like we both have our men's and women's conferences, right? My women's conference is triple his size. Yeah. I believe okay? it. <laughs> Which most women's conferences are, you know, <laughs> But I still remember when, you know, we're comparing our conferences. I'll be like, well, yeah. <laughs> <at> my numbers. <laughs> but it takes a confident man. It takes a confident man to see his wife succeed. And if we can get more couples, you know, operating in yeah. that sense, where we are for each other and not against, and that we're doing this together, because and we represent each other like when mike has success here it's mike and lisa yeah. if lisa has a success here it's mike and lisa you know we represent each other it doesn't have to be individually it has it's we just represent each other everywhere we go yeah you know i want to speak here to the men um <clears throat> i i've i've experienced this and and i i by no means have this all together i'm learning as i go but i but i have experienced with my wife um moments where i where i've 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 kind of i've called out in her and said hey why are you second guessing yourself you know yeah. why are you why are why, why are you being so critical <clears throat> because you wouldn't be this critical of somebody else and i found that that as i speak life speaking life is so important yeah. And I want to just speak to, to, the, to the men out there. It's so important to speak life into the women in our lives, whether it's our wife, whether it's our daughters, our sisters. Man, at, ch at my church, whenever I see a little girl, you know, a little girl from, you know, from the church, from family, I always, when they, if they come up to me or say hi, I always lean down and I say, you're so beautiful. Yeah. It's just speak. Who knows when's the last time they heard that or if they hear that. Speaking, there's something powerful about speaking life, and I don't think we do it enough. I was just at a, uh, uh, I was just at a restaurant with my wife and some some people from our from our team, and 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 I just took a moment to speak life into the into the to the young woman who was who was uh, serving us, and I said, you know, you've done such a great job, and 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 can we? And then we, I just said, can we do a thirty second prayer? And she's crying, right? And and so I want to speak to the men, especially because I think that if we're not careful, we can be quick to just think. We can think, wow, my wife is really good at that, but never say it. Yes. Or we can think, wow, she really did a great job, you know, uh, consoling that person or teaching that, that class mm -hmm. or, you know, she did an excellent job with the kids or whatever it is. And, and we think it and we know it, but sometimes we don't say it. And I think yes. there's power in that, right, Pastor Lisa? The generosity of your words. Yeah. Because I think a lot of times when you're pastoring, you know, or if you're leading, you're a CEO, you know, you're, you, you lead, you lead corporations. Yeah. You think about it, you give away your words yeah. to everyone else. But then when you come home, 
you hold back. You you want to you want to be quiet. You don't want to say anything anymore. You don't want to have to do it <laughs> you again. Turn off. You want to shut turn down. it off. You know, get let me get to my cave. You know. Yeah. Yeah. But honestly, we need it just as much. You know, and yeah. and and I I don't like the word balanced, but I just think the generosity of our words. I think we need to also look at how much are we giving that at home. Yeah, and, you know, we should give it more at home than we do outside. So, you know, um, I have a I have a counselor mentor, Dr. Bob Barnes, here in South Florida, amazing man. Uh, he started a ministry called Children House Family Ministries, and he told me he said he said Virgil, I can tell you the health of your church if you give me five minutes with your wife. Yes. And he told me, he said that he learned a lesson young in his marriage, young in his ministry calling where he realized that he was confronted and he was confronted with the fact God told him you're having an affair and the affair wasn't with a woman. It was with the ministry. Sure. Yep. And, and he says that that's his life goal right now is to speak into, into, um, you know, pastors and men, leaders lives and say, you really need to keep this in check. And he told me this and I'll never forget it. He told me, he said, Virgil, don't ever forget that when you're praying to your father, you're also praying to your father-in-law. <laughs> That's true. And, yeah. and, and gave, your father, to you. yes. And, and I'm thinking in my head, I'm thinking about my daughter, right? <laughs> I'm going to be somebody's father-in-law someday and they better watch how they treat my daughter. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. And so, and so he told me, remember that you're praying to your father-in-law and <laughs> he would, my father-in-law would say to me, how are you treating my daughter? And so, there's something powerful here, and, and uh, I love it, Pastor Lisa. I love how you and Pastor Mike have been able to walk this calling out as pastors leading the leading Inspire Church together in Hawaii, but also inspiring so many women, so many pastors, so many leaders. Uh, as we're kind of winding down this Q&A time on this yeah. podcast, which has been yeah, amazing. I know, we're having fun, right? Um, here's, what, here's what I want to um, ask you. Um, and, and the, kind of extending, in addition to the relationships we need to have kind of personal and family, how important do you think it is for leaders and pastors, um, um, whether it's in ministry or just kind of in life, to be networking and supporting other leaders and other pastors? Has that been something important for you and Pastor Mike? It's very important. Um, I think, you know, in the beginning years, you're, you're so focused on just yourself. You know, you're trying to build your own ministry, you build your own church, build your own business. And then eventually, you know, when you think about it, you've been praying for the fruit of this, of the church, you know, and, and God brought so many people into your life. Now it's a matter of now pouring it back out to other people. And so we do have a network of pastors all over the islands, um, even different states and countries uh, where we feel, and it's, you know, we feel like we want to be able to partner with you and share let's just share some great things and share and learn from one another and it's really important i think one of the things is the word competition we yeah. experience it in every degree of relationships and it is hard to just you know like like let's just say you know i have this amazing conference but someone else is going to do a conference and you're like wait where when you know <laughs> who are you bringing you know there's just this you know yeah, and yeah. It's learning how to just go, wait, we're in this together. Together, yeah. I'm going to cheer you on because someone cheered me on. You know, like Bobby Houston, Hillsong Color. It was at that conference, you know, when I saw what she did, I thought, I guess I can do that because I love, you know, there's people that are ahead of you. Yep. That have paved the way. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be people behind you who are getting ready to do what God's called them to do. And it's not just all about me. It's just not all about us. It's really about gleaning from people in front of you and, and people who are behind you. You coach, you teach, yeah. you know, because they're gleaning from you. Mm -hmm. And to know that I operate in both spheres where I'm still learning but yet yeah. I'm still coaching and I'm still leading others that it has to work that way. 
and that if we if we understand that it is not all about us then we can have that mentality of okay i'm gonna help that person build his house yeah i'm gonna learn how she built her house so that i can build my house so good you know i i as as we're wrapping this up i think that's a great message because a there's people ahead of us and it's so it feels good when they take time to pour into us. Yeah. We also have to be able to look back as we're going and seeing who can we pour into. And yeah. by grace, we, re, we give what we have by grace yeah. received. Uh, it's such a good example. Um, I want to make sure uh, everybody who's connected to this podcast can know how they can connect with you. Pastor Lisa, what's the best ways? Maybe, maybe how about social media? How can they find you? Well, Instagram, Facebook, at Lisa Kai, uh, message me, whatever. You can listen to the uh, my podcast. You can I am her. Through, I am her I podcast. Am her podcast. You can go to lisakai.tv. That's a yes. website that they created just for me, which is really unusual for me, which is very, you know, it's like, oh my gosh, really? Um, so there's quite a bit of way of getting in touch with me. So Awesome. Well, I want to let everybody know if you go to lisakai.tv, TV. You can get more information about Pastor Lisa. You can uh, get a little information about her book, Perfectly You. I recommend if you don't have it, you go out and get it. Uh, also, you can connect to her podcast. It's the I Am Her podcast. And uh, Pastor Lisa, I'm, I'm just honored to be here with you. I want to mention that you, are, you and Pastor Mike come out in the latest Avail journal. So for those who have not yet received their Avail journal, uh, which Avail Leadership, again, is a brand for Christian leaders. Uh, I'm holding it in my hand here. Pastor Lisa and her husband, uh, Pastor Mike, are in this last issue. Uh, great articles, great pictures. It's an amazing, amazing magazine. For those who are watching the video, you can see a little bit there. So the way you can get a free subscription, check this out, Pastor Lisa, there's a free annual subscription wow. of the Avail Journal. If people go to availjournal.com, availjournal.com, it's not just one free issue of the journal, it's actual an annual subscription. I guarantee you, leader, pastor, you know, ministry leader, market leader, there is going to be so much material, so much resources for your leadership in the Avail Leadership Journal. So I want to encourage you to get that at availjournal.com. Uh, let's close off, Pastor Lisa. What are some final words, final thoughts? I think people have really enjoyed this journey with us, whether they're listening to the podcast or watching the podcast. Uh, what are some last comments you want to share? You know, I just want to say thank you so much for this opportunity. This is really such an honor to be able to do this podcast with you and with Avail, with Dr. Sam Chan. And, you know, never would I have thought I would be sitting here doing a podcast. <laughs> And um, I get tears in my eyes. Um, it's just when God has um, taken you through some things. Yeah. And you're figuring out who you are. You, you just can't help but go, do you get it? Yeah. Do you get it? You can be perfectly you. And you can walk in your skin and not have to be one of be wow. someone else. And I think... Um, I think just that truth can just set you free and can really set you to a place where you can do so much in this yeah. lifetime that God has given you. And for me, my, my thing that keeps me going is my kids. Mm. It's for my daughters. Um, one of the things is when my child can say, my girls would tell me, mom, you're different. Mom, you've changed wow mom that was a good message mom wow mom you look great <laughs> mom for them to approve me is to me that was that's that's it that's all the approval yeah. that i'll ever need is to see that my daughters can see me as a role model and to see them be set free from any insecurities then i can say i did my job yeah. and i'm good so I just want to encourage you all to do the same for yourself is, you know, be set free from the lies of the enemy and just walk out the truth of God of who he says you are, which is perfectly you. That's so good. Thank you, Pastor Lisa, for being vulnerable enough to write the book, for, for opening up your heart. 
again, saying what others may be thinking, but not courageous enough to say. Uh, I think it really makes a difference. I think God's giving you a voice. I think God's giving you and your husband a platform in this season, in this time for, for a purpose. And so thank you for being obedient to God's call uh, at Avail Leadership. We're proud of you and, and we're, we're, we're excited you. to see all the things that God has in store. And thank you for sharing with all of us here on this podcast. Uh, it's been a huge honor for me and a great blessing. And with that being said, everybody, thank you for connecting with us on the Avail Leadership Podcast. We can't wait for you guys to stay connected every couple of weeks. Every week we have new episodes coming out. Every couple of weeks you're going to be surprised by all the content and the leadership gold, just like today with Pastor Lisa. So 